Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. And I'm excited about this pa panel. We don't have a whole lot of people sitting in the audience, but I appreciate those of you who are. And apparently we're streaming online and this will be recorded. So uh, welcome to the bigger audience that will see us someday in the distant future. Uh, but I'm very excited with this panel. We've got some fantastic people willing to come here today. I, I am very privileged to be able to talk with all of you. And so thanks for being here. We have just today announced Tyro. This is where Hedera gave all of its source code. It's the first public blockchain or DLT to do this, to give all their source code that's open source to an independent organization. And so now it is all under the LFD team, the Linux Foundation Decentralized Trust, which itself is under the Linux Foundation. And uh, this is all being announced today. We're all very excited about it, so we're gonna have a panel about it. And so let's just get started with uh, you, if you can introduce yourself, Daniela, and uh, tell us how does this Hyro fit into LFDT and into Linux Foundation, into the open source world as a whole? Sure, so. Um, give that back when you're done. All right, I'm Daniela Barbosa, and I'm the executive director of LF Decentralized Trust. And I've been working here at the Linux Foundation since 2017, when we first started bringing in projects and incubating ecosystems around blockchain. Um, and in 2016 and 2017, the blockchain space in the enterprise was very different than what it is today. Uh, permission distributed ledgers were essentially the craze. We were just talking about this before everybody was putting putting out press releases around these blockchain projects that they had. Um, and at the time, we really knew that there was not going to be one blockchain to rule them all from a technology perspective, that there was going to be different approaches, um, and that permissioned ledgers were important, and there's use cases that will continue to need permission ledgers. But we also had this premonition that public blockchains, permissionless blockchains, and very importantly, the ecosystems that were kind of, you know, what some people might call on the fringe working on them, were going to be an important part of how enterprises, how governments essentially build decentralized trust you know, systems and networks. Um, so if you fast forward to today, um, over the last few years, we've had other public blockchains in the ecosystem. And today's announcement with Hyro coming in um, really you know, shows the enterprise um, and the Hedera community that blockchain is something that um, um, companies will implement um, and are implementing and want to have options as well. Oh, that's great, thanks. And for the rest of you who are all in the Hedera ecosystem, could you please introduce yourselves and say what is it that you're building on Hedera? How, what is your role in the Hedera ecosystem? Thank you, Lehman. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Fazzati. I'm the founding partner of the Web3 venture builder, The Building Blocks. Uh, one of our ventures um, is tokenizing songs. It's called Song Bits. Um, and what we're doing is we're using Hedera um, for auditability purposes. So one of the challenges, because it's a security um, and uh, a song represents uh, a financial asset, uh, we need a serious DLT ledger that uh, can represent uh, the rights of that security. Um, and then uh, and, and enables people to be able to audit uh, that, the security in such a way so that you can uh, see who the rights holders are. Um, so we're building infrastructure uh, for to enable this technology. Um, one of the challenges that we have is uh, r uh, the world of um, music rights is very offline and very off-chain. And so we're building infrastructure uh, on top of the smart contract for media, we're building an extension that allows you to split the royalties securely, but also obfuscate uh, who owns the song and how much they're entitled to. Great. Awesome. And I appreciate um, y'all having me here. And Lehman, thank you for hosting. I'm very excited about the higher announcement. My name is Wes Geisenberger. I help lead a group called the HBAR Foundation Sustainable Impact Funds. In the Hedera ecosystem, the HBAR Foundation is a grant giving organization. We fund many projects. And the Sustainable Impact Fund is a key funder of an open source project called the Hedera Guardian, which is focused on environmental integrity issues to help folks understand when we're tokenizing an asset, especially an emission, an offset, a biodiversity credit, a water rights credit, not just the amount or the issuance amount, 
but actually digitizing the methodologies, making it easy to digitize it and put into a rules engine, which is the Hedera Guardian. And when you attest to information that leads to the issuance of that asset, knowing who said what when, um, whether it's a system, a device, um, a person, or a sensor. And knowing that every single data point is logged in the context, filling a role within the methodology allows you to better trust the asset. And so we've been funding not just the Hedera Guardian, but projects and applications building on top of it, as well as a series of sister um, open source repositories to help improve environmental integrity. And so excited to be here and appreciate y'all having me. Thank you. Um, yeah, hi, thank you, Lehman. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, my name is Milan, Milan Wieks van Rijn. Um, I, I've been in the Hedera ecosystem for almost four years now. Um, I'm a builder, creator, say inventor, I like to say that word. Um, and I, I like to build exciting stuff on Hedera. Most recently, I built uh, Nomit, uh, which is a peer to peer uh, payment uh, system. Um, really mimicking the habit that we already have with, when paying, going to a shop and paying with tap and pay. Uh, so you pay, and then you know directly goes from you as a customer to the to the to the vendor. Um, and you know, especially with Hedera and Finality, like three seconds, you know, it's it's, it's really great. Um, also, with that, I'm uh, I'm uh, one of the leads of the HBAR Foundry, which is a grassroots. Um, developer organization on, on Hedera. Uh, we have our weekly meetings, so I invite everyone to, to, to join us if you have questions or would like to be more involved in the developer community uh, on Hedera. Um, and we create uh, content related to Hedera, have our uh, monthly town halls. Um, so yeah, excited to be here, and thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Samson Gaudi. I joined Hedera about seven, eight months now, I think. So I'm here representing the community because um, today we announced Hyro, and that is what I represent. Um, basically, the goal is to make sure that we connect with the developers community and not just any builders, but also making sure that we do open source the right way. And that's why I'm really excited about here. So. So Hedera had its whole code base. So it was open source, but it was being managed by Hedera. This is what's traditional in blockchains. Is it's all open source, but it's managed by, you know, in some sense, the, the chain itself. This is a, a departure. This is a first thing of a public blockchain taking their code and making it into an independent organization uh, under Linux Foundation and under LFDT. How does this help LFDT and Linux Foundation? that we have done this? And how does this help Hedera that it is doing this? How is this beneficial to the different parties? What do you think? You know, I think one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that, you know, today's blockchain world, and back to my point before about adoption, is quite different. So you have some of the largest banks, for example, um, bringing blockchain projects into production. Um, you have the biggest pharmaceutical companies, the biggest energy companies, and they're all bringing blockchain technologies, regardless of which protocol they choose and they build on, into production. And also, there's a lot of regulatory requirements, for example, in production. And one of the things that builders will ask is, who ultimately controls the code? If I need to make an impact on the roadmap of the code, if I need to contribute a bug or a fix or a new feature, how do I go about doing that? So I think we're going to more and more in the ecosystem start ask, getting asked the question is, is this open source code openly governed? and openly developed. Can anyone show up and be able to influence the code and the assets that go in? Can anybody come and create commercial services on top of it so that is there's not just one company or one labs, for example, that you have to go to to work with to work with the protocol? So open governance and open development, and when I talk about what Linux Foundation Decentralized Trust is bringing is exactly that, is we all know that open source has won in the blockchain world. Anybody here disagree with me? <laughs> right? Open source has won. And now it's really open source that's openly developed and openly governed to make sure that you don't say, hey, who really makes changes in this? Is it two guys in a basement in Singapore that no one knows about? And that's a joke because there's not any basements in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Okay, so, so following up on that then, we have this open governance of the code base and, and Hedera still has a council that's governing other things, but the code base, the development, this should be bringing in more people, 
What do all of you think about this? How does this impact what you're doing? The fact that this now is going to be in, a, in an area where maybe it's going to be bringing more people in, to be adding to it and to be contributing. People have been contributing ideas with the HIPs, the Hedera Improvement Process, but this is that on steroids. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, how does that impact you? What do you think is gonna come from this? I think this is great. Um, see, where we're at, like we're, we're at a position where our ventures are building software in silos because they're ongoing concerns. They have their own CEOs and they're solving very similar problems. And the problem though is that you've got these silos and you're like, hang on, if you're solving similar problems, this sounds like infrastructure that could be repurposed where a, a, a bigger community could t tap into this. And so we are pointing our ventures towards this resource, uh, towards this foundation to not only, not, not, no longer build in a silo, but now take these smart contract extensions, share them with the world, and for that to become the standard way to do it. Because if we're doing it and another venture is doing it, most likely there's gonna be a few other people doing it who need to do it as well. So that's exactly what we're coming at this. This is the perfect venue for us to share what we're building and break the silos down. I think one thing I'm really excited about um, is the access to the broader sets of code base and SDKs. So the Guardian is, is not just a code base, but it also is a community in itself. And so there's an entire community thinking about how to create digitized and open source methodologies. And we've actually built the largest library, not just in Web3, but in the world of these digitized and open source methodologies because the Guardian makes it easier. And you can almost think of it as a you know, sophisticated climate SDK to not just understand the methodologies but understand how they're structured on Hedera, how all the data is structured on Hedera. And so now the fact that we have a more open way for contributing that anyone can understand, well, if, what if I want to add something at the lower level, not just the Guardian level of the code, how can I get access to contribute this? And maybe it doesn't just affect our climate or sustainability community, but it can affect the broader Hedera community and putting those contributions in place. The thing I think I'm most excited about is having direct access to affect change. And that ability to affect change, you know, will be touching a much broader Linux community. And I think there's opportunities even within the climate community that's focused in Linux to cross pollinate there um, and, and share skills and share thoughts and ideas. Yeah, um, I think Lehman, um, there is, there's really a gap that has been filled Really, you know, it's it's. I'm I'm. You know, I've I've. My background isn't wasn't really a developer. It's like over the past years that I've really come to learn how to code and to develop, until the point right now that I create a payment system, which is really really cool. I think that's at least my opinion. <laughs> and um, so the the gap that I'm talking about is is you know when I come here for for me it's it's really first time that I'm at an um, at a conference on, on open source. Um, you know, I see these, all these people that are really motivated, they're kind of, oh wow, this is, a, you know, they're really on their project and, you know, all the exciting stuff that they're building in open source, out in the open. I think, wow, this is actually a really nice gap that we filled with, um, with Hedera now, you know, with, with Hero. Um, and, and, and so, because, you know, you've, you've as you say, like, or traditional, Blockchain. It was then uh, um, that it was for right. You know, before it was for uh, Hedera who contributed to the source source code and so on. And you've got a very very big comp a very big community with Hedera um, of developers, grassroots developers. You know, I see that especially with with HBR Foundry. You know, we talk on a weekly basis, two times of meetings, and you know, constantly. Okay, what are our challenges, and how are we going to address it? And hey, who can we? Um, how can we uh, create this or do that? Uh, what do we need? And you know, it's really great to 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 find that. Um, to find that same spirit, that intrinsic motivation is how I call it. like people know what they're building for and how they're contributing. Um, and it's really great to find that back here and to see that also like, hey, that's exactly what Hero is going to provide, right? It's going to nurture that community and make sure that everybody's going to contribute and building together to, uh, to, to, to build the code base more robust and stronger so that we can all build on top of it. Um, so yeah, for me, I mean, I'm very excited. Um, it makes sense in many different ways, um, and I know also the members of the HBO Foundry, you know, are excited because this is exactly what addresses a lot of points, I think. 
Yeah, for me, I'm really excited um, to be interesting. Um, I started my open source career around the Linux Foundation too, which is great. Um, so I started contributing by writing code, um, and eventually I started doing open source. And so I, speaking as an individual developer, I think this makes a lot of sense, right? Um, from a code point of view, it makes a lot more people to, you know, give the project more exposure. You know, it gives more sustainability beyond, again, a particular vendor. It's always very, you know, open sourcing things are usually very vendor neutral, right? So again, I think one of the things that, I, that gets me excited when I joined Hedera was obviously hearing the idea, to, you know, keeping it secret for like nine, nine months now, um, was hearing the idea about going open source and of course going, going with the Linux Foundation. And when I heard about this, this plan, it just kind of gives room because my background has always been in, you know, DevRel and community. And whenever, especially when I hear, you know, the, the ideology around Web3 coming from Web2, it's always very interesting because I see the open source in, in the technology because it's built fundamentally from open source. But then when you're looking into the open source culture, it's a little bit different, right? Which is quite interesting. In fact, I have a talk at Altons Open saying decentralization is in open source. So again, having to work on this real time, and then of course, today, which we're here talking about Hyro, kind of gives room to see how, you know, I'm just much excited about seeing what the Web2, especially getting, standing as a nice bridge between getting those Web2 developers into our ecosystem, which is really great, so. Really happy, yeah. Oh, great. So I love that. Getting the Web2 developers into our ecosystem. This is a bridge for people that haven't done anything with blockchain or you know, cryptocurrencies and smart contracts and NFTs, all those things. This is a way to get into it now because now it's under someone familiar with Linux Foundation. I love that. So, so if you were talking to a, a blockchain that has, you know, they have their open source, they have their small group of developers, what would you say to them? Are they good to just keep doing what they're doing or should they do this new thing that we're, we're kind of pioneering here? What, what, what do you think? Well, you know, I think it's going to really be different for everybody depending on the stages that they're at. And I encourage every single blockchain that wants to do open development and open governance to actually look at the Linux Foundation, not just at LF Decentralized Trust, but the hundreds of other projects where we essentially, that's what we do. Um, and, you know, I think it's exciting, you know, to, to your point, Samson, around the big Web3 community. Like I said, blockchain, no doubt open source is one blockchain, but also blockchain communities are very developer focused, where some other you know, communities and industries are not so developer focused. So those Web3 developers are essentially the leaders of your communities. Um, and you know, I'm glad that you mentioned about Linux Foundation, this is the first open source project uh, uh, conference that you've been at, because you see the energy and the difference in how open source evangelists, open source developers talk about participating and contributing, right? It is about contributing to the core for everybody to take benefits on. So for me, even if someone decides that they don't want to come under Linux Foundation, if they learn the core principles of what the Linux Foundation does over open governance, but we are an open community, and I think that we have shown over the last eight years at what is known as the Hyperledger Foundation focused on blockchain, that you can have competing protocols work collaboratively together for the outcome of the industry. And so the more Web3 blockchain ecosystems that come into our community, I think the greater chance we have of expanding and really reaching the missions and the charters of these blockchains. Mm, very nice. I love it. So what do you think, the rest of you, about the future? Uh, what, what kind of a future are you seeing for Hyro? For Hedera, for open source in general, what are you seeing as the future that we are at the start of at this point? Uh, it's really simple: adoption, adoption, adoption. Like I see this as infrastructure that can be uh, become invisible, uh, infrastructure that um, everyone can contribute to and see. Like, oh, I see this. Someone has thought through this particular problem. Maybe this is something that I could use for my problem, and therefore it brings in adoption. So for me, it's all about adoption and about uh, 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 convening the most amount of intelligent minds to solve a particular problem in a way that's structured. Otherwise, it's just back to silos, and then, yeah, no one shares. <laughs> I really see an opportunity for us to help achieve the original vision of the shared worlds. And those shared worlds that we've talked about since the earliest days of even before Hedera existed, 
you know, I think there's an opportunity specifically in the community that I, I um, you know, participate in, in the climate community, to bring some of those co open code bases together. They're open source today. They're open source maybe partially in Hedera's GitHub repo under Hashgraph or applications in our ecosystem, but I think these things can come together. And oftentimes when we talk not necessarily to technologists, we say technology is just a process um, mirroring the world that we live in, and it's only as good as it can be defined. And so if we bring these different tools together, these pr projects to participate in HIRO, to look not just at their specific project, but how these applications talk to applications and how those applications work and talk to real people, I think that we can help interconnect those different layers because we have Hedera, we have, say, the Guardian ecosystem, and the, the Guardian may support three, four, or five applications even for a single use case. And so now we can go look at whether it's the methodological layer, the project application layer, and how they talk to each other in the real world and integrate them maybe even to other systems where I want to have financial traceability, like a payments use case, into a climate use case. Maybe we're just enabling financial traceability for an end user into a climate uh, project that you can watch that payment trace the community. And those could be three or four applications that are all part of an open source community. Well, there's all really amazing answers from everybody. Um, yeah, the future for Hero, and you know, I think the biggest thing is um, there's. It almost seems like there's like two big worlds, right? The Web three and Web two, which in a way doesn't really make sense to me. I guess. I mean, so you know, just to quickly, you know, go back a few years when there was a lot of hype around blockchain and and, and everything. Um, you know, I was like, no, I don't want to do anything with that. It's speculation. You know, it's just, you know, just I can't keep up with that, and I, I will lose anyway. And you know, somebody told me, but look, look into Hedera. I was like, oh, okay. And and I looked into, it and I was like, okay, wait, is this like literally the only network that packed the, the fees to US dollar? So wait, now it's scalable because as a, as an enterprise, you will know how much you're going to pay. Right, you know it's 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 very efficient. Uh, it's um, it's most efficient blockchain, can I say? Um, in in you know the the speed and, and everything makes sense. And okay, now I can translate it from a um, how do you say that the um, what well, everyone talks about to the practical side of things, right? To to make actual real world use cases. And, and I think that's that's where I see the future, right? That we integrate um, uh, the Hashgraph algorithm hero um, in a way that tomorrow we don't realize we're using it. As we're using nowadays internet, who cares about what kind of protocol we use? We just care about using it. And it works, right? And that's what I would love to see. Where, you know, in, in, in tomorrow, that it's just part of of any. Um, there's no difference anymore between Web two and Web three. It's just the code base that we're all working on, and it integrates on a level that makes sense. Honestly, I, I honestly I love that reply because that's the next thing I want to say. So. Basically, um, you know, one of the things that I started, started thinking about, like, especially building the community around Hyro, was to think about, like, what are the ways that we can collaborate with the developers community without feeling like saying Web 2 or Web 3, right? Uh, so first, one of the things we're going to be doing, especially um, from next month, is um, um, going to be part of the Hacktoberfest program. So basically, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're opening good first issue across the code base, and then we're making that available to anyone that can write code. And of course, uh, for people that are, are, are non-con contributors can also you know, be able to do some articles, you know, write content, and also to be able to promote. And I think this gives room for people like myself that have always been curious around like, how do I you know, contribute to a, a project that makes a whole lot of sense, especially in the blockchain um, community. And I think that's, that's, that's truly amazing. And thanks for giving that context, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just w one thing to add to that is, you know, if I explain it to somebody, I just say, look at it like it's AWS, Google Cloud. You know, you're just paying for your transactions, but in this way, you can actually, you know, if you don't use your credits, you can actually sell it back. Somebody else, I think you said, no, somebody else thought, I can't remember who said it, but somebody else, I don't want to take credit for that saying. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like that. It makes sense. So I am excited for the future of Hiro, for the future of the Hedera project. Here's the really fun question. Tell me what, you are, what you're seeing in the future of the project you are involved in.
So what is the future of LFDT? What is the, for, for all of you, including you, what's the future of LFDT, the future of Linux Foundation? What's the future of the things you're building on Hedera? Tell me about what you see as the future of what you're doing right now. <laughs> oh, I usually like to say the future is open. It's an inside joke from another community that I run. Um, the reason why I think so is because, again, um, I want to be able to go to conferences and then people are telling me that, oh, I send a pull request and, 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 and people are constantly building. Because I love when um, people sit together and hack, and that has always been the center of my career. Um, and again, of course, I'm always looking forward to seeing how the developers community works. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm most excited about there. Yeah, I would I would say enablement, like enabling people to to build. But you know, it's so interesting how you you know, for example, the use case that I built with Nomit, no middleman, the pay to pay, peer to peer payment system. You know, it's it's not necessarily um, a lot of people have talked about it. Um, you know, I'm doing it, and suddenly for a lot of people, it clicks. Right, so having like these small little use cases or bigger use cases, and that like those are the foundation layer. This is the foundation layer of uh, how the future infrastructure looks like for many applications. Um, I think that's that's really the future and enabling people to build. Like, how do we enable um, people to 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 use using the Hashgraph algorithm, uh, leverage Hero. Um, and yeah, I think uh, you know that's that's. There are many ways to do that. Uh, I think fostering the 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 community, fostering intrinsic motivation. It's I said it often. I'll say it again. It's pure gold. You know, having people that wake up and go to bed with, oh yeah, I want to build this, it's exciting, you know, and I've got all these, all these other people that support me and uh, all the tools available, uh, and I'm going to do it, because I'm going to make it happen. And, and you know, being able to harness that intrinsic motivation, um, enabling those people, you know, that's, that's really the future, and that's how we, you know, uh, get bigger and more, more use cases on building, yeah. So a lot of folks in what we would call like the Hedera Guardian community, they're thinking about building infrastructure, that layer on top of Hedera upwards to provide environmental integrity. And today we have in just the Hedera Guardian repo about 70 contributors, uh, give or take a few. And some folks are working through companies, so it's more than that. But the future that I see being built is building the layers on top of that layer and the layers adjoining to it. And, and I think that, you know, Adding levels of sophistication is important so that we can reach the academic community who's maybe not as technical, the NGO community, the non-governmental organization community, governments themselves, other Fortune 500s. And we, today we already have Fortune 500s, including Hedera Governing Council members who have contributed. But what we're building many times is on top of this digitized and open source methodology library is, well, what can I do now that I have this workflow engine that collect all the data? Well, the next level is, well, let's make it automatically extensible so anyone can pull all the data on Hedera, and I can see this data. And we call that the Guardian Indexer, and that exists today in the open source. And so I can write in the Guardian, write the rules, write the data through all these different parties. I can read it with the Indexer, and now what we're building is these statistical libraries, so maybe now the government statisticians can get involved, or people can look at analytics of, is this credit really a credit? Are the attributes around the credit really economic development attributes, social attributes, other types of benefits around the sustainable development goals in the carbon credits or on the emissions tracking side? Are my liabilities or my maybe the negatives that I, uh, you know, put out in the world by creating and you know maybe I'm extracting something? Maybe I want to show if I'm really trying to do something to minimize those negatives, and I can start to see the attributes around the workflow. And all of a sudden, we can start to develop labels. The labels that we see in the world, maybe about that I'm sustainably harvesting wood, or maybe I'm sustainably um, creating a product. Those are the things that I really want to see where this open source community can build tools that are fully traceable down to the atomic level that lives on Hedera. And I'm very excited for that future where it's not just a technical community, but what we develop as a technical community is accessible by every person on planet Earth, no matter how they're working together in that shared world. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so what I see for the future of what we're building uh, relates to 
the assets that we're putting on chain. Uh, I don't know how familiar the audience is with the Web3 lingo, but there's a lot of obsession with real world assets. Um, and I look forward to a future soon, very soon, uh, where the it's not the asset because what happens there is it gets disconnected from the business model that actually brings the value to that asset, whether it's uh, songs that you're putting on chain or movies or even cars or, uh, or the supply chain. Um, the challenge that you have is that you, anyone can list an asset on a chain, but what is that? That's just, that's just an entitlement. That just represents a record of ownership. What I'm looking forward to is real world business model being represented on chain where the whole thing from 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 the creation of value to the value exchange the the exchange of currency for that service or good uh, to the remuneration and the monetization the whole thing happens on chain uh, that is a future that i'm very much looking forward to uh, to building well, you know, I think this points to all, all, all the comments from the other panelists about the diversity of the Hedera ecosystem. And I'm very excited about welcoming that diverse ecosystem into HIRO and into LF Decentralized Trust. Um, the other thing that I think is really important is that this is not a new relationship for Hedera and the Linux Foundation through uh, what was known as the Hyperledger Foundation. Wes, for example, has over the years collaborated very closely with our climate action um, um, special interest group because there's, once again, the commonalities that you want to build together other, um, whether it's specifications and standards and obviously down to applications. So I think it's really important um, to realize that HIRO is a new project within the Linux Foundation. It comes already with a wealth of a community that has a lot of knowledge and a lot of developers and ecosystems. I'm very excited about that. And I'm excited, you know, in a couple of months' time and in six months' time and 12 months' time, for example, if you go to LFX, which is LFX is our insights platform that shows shows the growth of the developer ecosystem and the contributions that have come in and the diversity of the companies contributing to our code projects, I have no doubt that Hiro is going to see really great incremental um, increases in developers and contributions from non-Hedera uh, or Hashgraph developers. Um, and that's exciting. And that's why I think when the leadership made a decision to come to the Linux Foundation, they understood that not only do we have that governance model in place, Place. We have the tools and the community and the support, essentially, of a global ecosystem to make you all successful. Mm. Oh, that's great. You know, I, I love this panel. I want to give a chance for the audience to ask any questions, if you have any. If you don't have any, I have more things we can talk about, but yes. Um, so, first of all, I contribute to Kubernetes. Uh, I'm working on Edge, so I'm very familiar with the most foundation for this. So my question is, my first question is, is there a structure right now? Because I know that open source projects, like as large as Kubernetes, for example, have the structures. What is the release cycle like? What is the release going to be like? Um, is there extensive documentation for people that want to contribute? Um, mm. If I want to contribute, if I, want, if I go to there today and I want to contribute, is there like extensive documentation? Like I want to understand what that structure looks like. Yeah. Can I take the project structure first Go and then you'll take the higher answer, then they can answer. Yeah. So first I'll talk about the project structure because you are correct, right? There is a framework for how projects come into these foundations and how they move through the project life cycle. Each project under LF Decentralized Trust has their own technical steering committee. That technical steering committee has its own project charter um, and that project charter essentially defines the mission and the charter of the project itself. The technical steering committee members um, I call them, they're the queens and the kings of their projects. I, as staff, cannot tell them what to do. We have a technical advisory committee that oversees the governance and kind of the, the processes in place, but once again, cannot tell the technical steering committee of the specific project what to do. And that's really open to have, you know, uh, really uh, important to have a, from a governance perspective. Projects come in, they might come in under labs or un incubated. Hiro came in as an 
incubated project, and there's a project life cycle that comes with project services that then the maintainers get that are aligned to that. And then you go from incubated to graduated. And you go to in graduated when you meet the criteria that the Technical Oversight Committee has established for that specific overlasting uh, foundation. And those things are really important because it's predictable. Right, and so your engineers that are building or others that are can understand how the process is, um, and it's important for the developers in, and the maintainers of these projects to make sure that they know where they are and where they need to get to. We've had to demote projects. We have to archive projects. We don't want unhealthy uh, open source projects because then when contributors or users come, they have a very bad experience. So the foundation as a whole also manages the project life cycle to make sure they're healthy and the Linux Foundation has a lot of tools, primarily with LF Insights, and you can go on LF Insights today and see all the code contributions that are coming in for LF Decentralized Trust, and soon we'll have Hyro in there as well. So these are really important things just from a project governance perspective, and I'll let Lehman address the project-specific one. <laughs> yes. Oh, so those are great questions. So first of all, I think we do have good documentation. Please look at it, and if we don't, let us know. Help us fix it. This is what it's all about. Uh, for release schedule, Hedera has had a monthly release schedule for years. Hyro is not tied to Hedera's release schedule. Hyro now has the opportunity to decide, do we want to change things like the release schedule? And so the leadership of Hyro now can do this. And you can get involved in this as well, of talking about this. And you could say, no, we need a weekly schedule, or we need a, a every six-month schedule, or whatever, and start to argue about that. So we have, by default, all the stuff that we were born with but we're allowed to change it now. And I really hope you get involved. Uh, <laughs> and before, oh, it is a really good question. Before you get to your second one, does anyone else have something they'd like to say? Yeah, yeah I mean, th th those are really amazing uh, answers, which I will not be able to reproduce as well. But um, also in terms of community support, I mean, that's that's where, you know, HBAR Foundry would fit in perfectly. You know, that's where we often, uh, if we see someone like, you know, struggling or maybe hey, very excited to join, you say, hey, come join us on that Friday meeting. It's really like a water cooler moment and you share your project and then you, you realize that there's like another person in the meeting say, hey, but I'm working on that as well. Let's connect. And then behind the scenes, you know, a lot of stuff is happening. So that's another source of documentation in a way. <laughs> oh, I love, go ahead. Yeah, just one thing, if you're interested in the climate side for the Hedera Guardian community, we also have a community call um, that's just very climate focused, and we also have documentation on hedera.com uh, slash guardian. So, or docs.hedera.com. <laughs> so I love this. The Hyro community includes all these little communities. The HBAR Foundry is going to be a great community to help you get involved. And for climate, the Guardian community is really good. And so you can get involved in these communities that are now going to come alongside with Hyro and build the Hyro community out of all of them. We maybe have time for one last question. So there's a Discord channel for LF Decentralized Trust where all our projects have uh, different channels within their pro uh, projects as well. Um, and there you'll find the maintainers and the contributors and the other end users, right, that are asking similar questions. Um, and once again, because, you know, Hyro is going to be a project within the Linux Foundation Decentralized Trust, these other, you know, communities that are alongside, like Guardian, et cetera, those places you go to as well for, um, for help and, and to get to know other folks. Mm -hmm. oh, we look forward to getting you involved. Uh, that'd be great. Uh, did you have a question? Yes, I just uh, one uh, quick question, probably to Daniel, to all of you, um, and that is the question of adoption. And one area where I see it's ripe for adoption, but a lot of pushback for years I've been in the space is infrastructure, in particular energy infrastructure. Uh, they're trying to establish interoperability as energy markets get decarbonized, assets become more distributed. They need to account for things in a way that uh, hash graph is a of technology, but as soon as you mention anything related to blockchain or whatever, they, they sort of get scared and run for the hills. Mm -hmm. Part of that, I think, is the uh, tokenized crypto economic model, which they look at and with some I get side mm -hmm. looks. But I just wondered what 
thoughts do you have now that you have this uh, HIRO project under the Linux Foundation to maybe get engaged with other parts of Linux Foundation, the other one I'm involved with, LF Energy, to try and encourage more adoption for people who are managing billions of dollars worth of assets, having to make 50 year bets on things and know that it's going to be and there's going to be support for that in an open source ecosystem around what HIRO uh, does. Time for one quick answer. I think this is for Wes, actually. So, <laughs> yep. so in the Hedera ecosystem, there's actually a pretty large community, not just focused on the climate, like carbon emissions or carbon credits, but there's actually an energy-focused uh, group. And there's been studies by US government arms looking at the, not just the energy intensity of Hedera, but actually how to apply it for energy trading for peer-to-peer. -peer. We have multiple peer-to-peer -peer use cases for energy, especially related to distributed energy resource management wholesale power trading, tokenization of energy assets that's happening today where government bodies are trading. Now that also exists in Europe as well. We've had projects at a localized level for decentralized energy trading um, too. And so we're happy to go through some of those use cases with anyone who wants to, but we also put on dlt.earth or dltearth.com um, some of those use cases specifically for wholesale power trading and distributed energy resource management or peer-to-peer -peer power trading. All right, well, thank you for the questions. Thank you for this. It's been a real privilege for this panel. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for watching, and please get involved. Uh, get in contact with us, and you can get involved in so many different ways. Thank you all very much. Thank you.